You guys are like, that's done. You're wrong. You're stupid. You don't know. Hey, do some science. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going back to revisit one of the most controversial videos that I've made. It's the video about how a heavier quad flies. To no, no, it's not that one. It's not that. Pretend that one doesn't exist. <laughs> It's a video about battery wire gauge. You know, your battery, they commonly come with either 12 gauge wire or 14 gauge wire. And many people feel that the 12 gauge wire is like higher performance because it has lower laws. And I made the argument in my previous video that kind of doesn't matter. Well, we're going back. We're going to look at that again and try and consider some of the things that people said I got wrong in that original test. And we're going to look at 18 gauge versus 20 gauge for ESC and motor wires. See if the same thing holds true. Stay tuned. In case you missed it, let me sum up for you the results of my previous round of testing. Of course, there's a link down in the video description to the whole video if you want to go watch it. I pushed 50 amps through four feet of 12 gauge and 14 gauge wire. And I measured the voltage drop across that. And based on that voltage drop, then I calculated the resistance of the wire. And based on that, I calculated how many volts and how many watts you would lose in a typical battery lead or quadcopter power lead. And the conclusion I came to was that at, because of the very, very short lengths of wire that we're typically using, the difference between 12 and 14 gauge is pretty negligible. This table here shows how much voltage will be dropped by a certain length of wire, three, six, or 10 centimeters, when a certain number of amps flows through it. And the more amps and the longer the wire, the more voltage is dropped. And that means less power to the motors and more heat buildup in the wire. Okay, so lower numbers are better. And this table shows the same thing for 14 gauge wire. And then we come to these tables, which I think are the ones that we really care the most about, which is the difference between 12 and 14 gauge wire. And what we can see is that at 120 amps, we'll be dropping, uh, and 10 centimeters of wire, we'll be dropping 0.04 volts or five watts. We'll be dropping five watts of power when you consider that the motor's putting out, you know, 900 watts or something, I don't know, a, a big freaking number. Five watts is really nothing. And some people argued in my last video that 10 centimeters is actually too short, that uh, number one, you need to count the round trip length of the wire, not just the length. So if you have a battery with a 10 centimeter lead, you've actually got 10 centimeters of positive wire and 10 centimeters of negative wire. So the total distance is 20 centimeters. So even if we say we've got, you know, 10 centimeters of battery and 10 centimeters of lead on the quad, let's call it 40 centimeters. We multiply this number by four, we get 20 watts. That's still basically nothing. And remember that that is at 120 amps. At lower numbers, it's even less. Another argument that some people made was that you can't just calculate the resistance at 50 amps and then scale that up and down to higher or lower values. They argued that there was a, a characteristic of the wire where the resistance would be nonlinear. As the amps goes up, you'd actually see an increase in the measured resistance, the voltage drop, and so on. So they argued that my higher numbers were actually too conservative. Here's how I tested that. Since I've got this wonderful West Mountain battery analyzer that I'm using for battery testing, I actually have the ability to pull a constant current very easily from anything. Now, I normally use that for testing batteries, but I can just as easily hook my 1200 watt <laughs> computer power supply that I use for charging batteries. I can easily hook that up and I can, uh, I can pull current from it. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in building a power supply just like the one that I've got, I've got a link down in the video description to all of the parts that I used and basic instructions for how it goes together. Uh, if you charge batteries, and of course I know you do, this is the cheapest and most effective way to get a power supply for your battery charger. Here are the results of the test. I pulled 26, 51, and 76 amps through four feet of 14 gauge wire. And I measured the voltage drop uh, as the test was performed. And I used the amps and the voltage drop to calculate the resistance using Ohm's law. Now, what we, the question that we're trying to answer here is, is this resistance value consistent at different amp readings? And we can see here that it basically is. 
it's it's consistent down to four decimal places, which is the number of significant figures in my measurement tool. So based on this, I conclude that we can measure the resistance at, say, 50 amps, and then use that resistance value to calculate the, the voltage drop and so on for other amp values. You may be wondering, by the way, why I didn't go higher than 75 amps, and the reason for that is that's the most that my 1200 watt massive power supply is capable of putting out. Uh, so I figured 70, that's a pretty good spread. 25, 50, and 75 amps, that's a pretty good spread. So what you're looking at here is the test results for 18 gauge versus 20 gauge wire. Now I did, when I, when I went back to make this video, I noticed that there was a little bit of a glitch in my data and I want to acknowledge this. The voltage drop measurement for the 20 gauge test was all over the place. I must have had the alligator clip not secure and I didn't notice it until today. Uh, so what I've done is I've pulled the resistance value for 20 gauge from a standard table. And the reason I feel okay doing that is that the resistance values I've been calculating have been pretty darn close to the values in the standard tables. So you want to acknowledge that this is not an experimentally derived value, but I still feel like the numbers we're going to get here are, are they're somewhat useful and can give us some perspective on this result. Nevertheless, take that into consideration. And as we go down here and look at the final conclusion, I think it's pretty much the same conclusion as we saw with 12 and 14 gauge, that at the very short wire lengths we're dealing with, there's not much practical difference between them. One thing you're going to notice is that I only go up to 40 amps. And the reason for that is that if an individual motor is pulling 40 amps, then it's going to, uh, that's 160 total amps for your quad. And if you've got a battery that can put out 160 amps for very long, that's a pretty unusual battery. Uh, so, so I feel like that's a, a fair way to, you know, to, to stop the test. Uh, we've got three, six, and 10 centimeters of wire. Remember that is both ways. So 10 centimeters of wire would be that your ESC was five centimeters from the PDB because it's 10 centimeters round trip. And again, I feel like that that's, that's pretty fair. So what we see is that we're dropping 0.03 volts, 30 millivolts or 1.2 watts. The difference between 18 and 20 gauge is that 20 gauge will drop just a little more than one watt. That's not freaking much. You guys asked one more really interesting question that I wanted to address, and that was about temperature. As current flows through the wire, the temperature of the wire goes up, and as the temperature of the wire goes up, the resistance actually goes up. So you can get kind of like a feedback loop where the increased resistance causes increased heat buildup, causes increased resistance, and the wire can get pretty freaking hot. What you're seeing here is the voltage curve of 50 amps being pushed through the four feet of wire. And what we'll see is that as the wire heats up, notice that the volts is dropping. And the reason for that is that the resistance of the wire is going up and the voltage drop through the wire is also increasing. So the amount that we see this voltage drop reflects the heat buildup in the wire. And how much is it? When we look here at the beginning of the test, we can see the voltage is 11.398 11 volts. And at the end of the test, the voltage is 11.344. So 0 0.05, about 50 millivolts of difference due to the heat buildup in the wire. Again, this is not a battery. This is just my power supply. So the voltage the power supply is putting out is rock solid. Uh, about 50 millivolts of difference over um, about a minute. 1.3, 1.4 minutes, so 60 to 90 seconds. 50 amps being pushed through this wire for continuously for over a minute, and we had a difference of 50 millivolts. This test shows 60 amps for one minute. We start the test at about 11.18 volts, and by the end of the test, we're down to 11.10 volts, so 80 millivolts. And bear in mind, these are continuous. We're pushing 50 amps without stopping, unlike on your quadcopter, where number one, there's blowing air, which is going to cool it. Number two, this was four feet of wire, not, you know, a few inches of wire like is on your quadcopter. And number three, on your quadcopter, the load is not continuous. It's pulsed. You're getting a 60 amp uh, you know, burst, but then you drop down to 20 or 30 amps. The bottom line is you really don't think heat buildup in the wires is going to throw these results off. In other words, I stand by my previous results. 12 gauge, 14 gauge, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, 
because the wires that we're using are so freaking short, it doesn't matter much. And that's going to wrap up another round of Joshua makes controversial statements that you guys think you guys are like, that's done. You're wrong. You're stupid. You don't know. Hey, do some science. Give me some data. Don't just pop down in the comments. A comment on one of my other videos. Somebody was like, you clearly don't know anything about electricity and you should consult with an expert. You're a moron. Well, that's not helpful. You haven't made anybody smarter. You've just made yourself feel good. Congratulations, drive-by commenter. If you think I've got something wrong, show me some data. Show me some facts. Make us all smarter. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Happy flying.